Hello, uh, PSI 2000 students. This is Dr. Conway back uh, to talk about uh, week two, uh, which is called Managing Canada's Diversity, Founding Nations and New Canadians. I hope you uh, enjoyed the readings for the first week and started to get into uh, into uh, issues of uh, you know forming your own opinion on on some of the key concepts in political science. Uh, in this week, you're focusing on uh, what I would call one of the key structural aspects of Canadian politics, which is um, uh, uh, Canada as a as a, a diverse country from the point of view not only of uh, cultural and ethnic diversity, but also from the perspective of regional and structural diversity, um, and that uh, how this defines or helps define Canadian politics from the point of view of what you read in the press and, and so on all the time about Canadian politics. In fact, there's an, an international joke uh, that, that goes around that in international airports or in Canadian international airports, uh, we're the only country that has uh, a bookshelf full of do books on federalism uh, in, in, uh, in airports and in, in airport bookstores because um, that has been such a key feature of uh, diversity has been such a key feature of, of Canadian politics and and people from other countries that have more um, of a unitary states or states that are predominantly uh, German or Japanese or, or whatever often look at Canada and marvel and saying um, Canada must be an incredibly difficult country to govern because it is so diverse both ethnically and uh, economically uh, uh, from a regional point of view. And so it's very important for you to understand these, uh, these concepts of, of what we mean by uh, cultural diversity and what we mean by regional diversity in Canada, because those are the things that, that uh, so much of our politics tends to spend time on. Um, how often do you see um, federalism or federal provincial conflict or federal provincial debate covered in the media on Canadian politics. How often have you seen growing up uh, the, the discussions of uh, uh, French English politics in Canada or uh, politics between um, the oil and gas emphasis of Alberta as opposed to the, the needs of central Canada with respect to the manufacturing base and how we balance those two interests um, and so on. And um, uh, th this defines a lot about uh, Canadian politics because that is our, our political reality. Uh, we're not a homogeneous or relatively homogeneous uh, single ethnicity, single state type, uh, single government type of a, of a country. We tend to be a, a multi-nation um, and we have a, a federalist form of government which is uh, a central government or a federal government and provincial governments and not to mention the municipal governments. So our diversity is a key aspect, a unique aspect in many ways with respect to how our, uh, our, our, our political landscape works in Canada. And so what we do, we want to do is look at making sure that we have an understanding of this structural backdrop of what is Canada um, and how that has changed over time. You recall in the last video that I released, I talked about the two founding nations as being one of the defining characteristics of 1867 Canada and how that is, is changing over time to reflect a new kind of diversity that is not only ethnic diversity, but we have uh, all kinds of diversities that have been typical of developed countries generally, everything from uh, gender politics to uh, to a sexual orientation politics to all kinds of other diversities that um, need to be managed within a political system, which creates stresses on a political system and requires a political system to adjust. Um, and so uh, it's important for you to understand how you know some of our early concepts on diversity have, have been transformed through things like immigration, through things like modernization of I ideas around uh, a single parent household, sexuality, uh, disabilities, uh, all of the factors that reflect diversity that politics needs to find a way to manage. Uh, the relationships uh, in that diversity in a way that uh, that creates stable government that create that maintains legitimate government and doesn't rely on on coercion but rise relies instead on the rule of law um, and that is a lot about what politics is about how does a government how does a set of governments at different levels struggle with and create the institutional and process mechanisms that allows us to accommodate that diversity in a way that maintains peaceful government 
uh, a collective will to work together, to live together, um, and without the, an undue reliance on coercion, but rather reliance on voluntary compliance with the influence of a political process that generates the rule of law. Okay. Um, and in terms of regionalism, I mean, we see this every day in our media, right? I mean, uh, you know, Alberta's being favored or Ontario's being favored or Quebec is, is uh, getting too much out of the Federation or the Eastern provinces, there are too many unemployed and they're always on unemployment insurance and so on and so forth. And most of these things tend to be dramatized beyond all factual evidence. But nevertheless, these are political uh, diversities that need to be managed within a governance system. And, um, and so you need to, to understand that in Canada, uh, uh, diversity, whether that be cultural, ethnic, or regional economic, is a really key defining factor of our politics. Whereas in other countries, that might not be the case. Um, uh, for many, uh, uh, whereas in sort of countries like, uh, let's, say, let's look at Great Britain, for example, uh, within England proper, there is none of that. I mean, the English, they view themselves as English, uh, you know, they, 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 they have a unitary form of government um, and not a federalist form of government. Uh, they function quite well. But when you roll Great Britain in there and you have Scotland and you have Ireland, uh, then you also begin to enjoy uh, to experience some uh, ethnic diversity as well as regional economic diversity, but in Canada you can magnify that uh, several times over, um, and this is this is the reality. Whereas in Japan, uh, their politics wouldn't be defined in that way. Their their politics would be defined through through other central concerns of their political system, but in Canada it's impo impossible to govern without uh, being a, being highly sensitive as a politician to the issues of diversity and regional economic uh, 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 conflict or discrepancies or rivalry or whatever you want to call it, depending upon the issues that's, a, that's at stake. Um, and so understanding that diversity in Canada is, is critically important. Understanding the influence of regionalism in Canada is critically important to understanding who we are as a people and, and what our politics, uh, what a lot of our politics is defined uh, by. And so in this, in this uh, week, I want you to really get a grasp of uh, how influential issues of diversity and regionalism have been in Canadian politics since before 1867, actually, but, um, it's, and, and continues through to today, but in a quite different format, right? Um, Whereas in 1867, few would have disputed the economic dominance of central Canada. Uh, today, lots of people dispute whether that should continue to be the case or not. In 1867, we had two founding nations, uh, the French and the English. Uh, in uh, two, 2016, uh, th that is fading as a, as a concept as we have become so much more diverse through immigration over time. Um, so all of this has transformed us, and how did our political system deal with this transformation? How did we stay together? How did we avoid separation? What are the political institutions that we've had to put in place to manage this diversity, to manage this regionalism? And if you don't understand that, you'll never understand navigating Canada's political landscape because it is such a dominant characteristic of who we are as Canadians. Um, and that uh, defines us in many ways from, from so many other governments, so many other countries that maybe have high predominance of one ethnic group uh, and high predominance of a unitary state. In other words, there's a government, and that government basically has junior governments that basically do its bidding, whereas in Canada, there's a constitutional division of powers. There's a federal government that has a division of power in the constitution of provincial governments that on their own right have constitutional power. Not just power emanating from the federal government, but constitutional power in our highest law. So uh, the, all these characteristics of Canada as a diverse and regional nation define a lot about what our politics is. And uh, we need to understand that to really begin to understand what is Canada as a political entity. So uh, enjoy the readings. Uh, think these issues through very carefully. Uh, you know, remember back. I mean, what have you read since you were... Uh, you know, first started reading about politics in the newspapers. I mean, uh, what would you say has been the dominant storyline over the late years of your life reading these things in Canadian politics? Um, 
has it been our military adventurism uh, internationally, like maybe like the USA, our foreign policy like in the USA, uh, uh, or has it been uh, Canada as a diverse nation and coming to grips with that on a constant basis? Think it through uh, because it's a key aspect of Canada's political identity. Okay, enjoy the week's readings and uh, we'll be back with uh, week uh, three. Okay, talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye now.